Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. If you are new here, my name is Hallie and I'm really excited you landed on this video today. If you haven't already, go ahead and subscribe to my channel. Of course, no pressure, but if you feel inclined to, it would mean the absolute world to me. Today I am doing a video like a Destination 101, Destination Wedding Planning Tips Q&A all in one. I'm giving you everything today. So I'm really excited. This has been very highly requested. So I'm doing it today and I'm giving you all I got. So with that being said, I am going to start off with a little background of our wedding. I know some people watching this may not know our wedding story, like where we got married and all of that. So I'm just going to do a quick background on that so people are caught up and understand. I'll throw up a couple wedding pictures now. Like here and there and everywhere so you guys can kind of see what our wedding looked like and yeah I'm really really excited about this and I hope you guys are too I hope this is helpful and let's do this I want to start this video off with a little background on why we chose a destination wedding and why we went that route versus a traditional in the states wedding number one it was a vacation the idea of a vacation really stood out because i knew most people weren't going to like fly in for the wedding day and leave the next day they were going to come for three or four days a lot of people that i talked to before our wedding and when i was planning kept saying you know it's one day it's going to go by so fast it's so stressful there's so much that goes into it and then it's just over so the idea of a destination wedding to me i felt like i would have a longer time with my guests and our wedding day of course we would have a wedding day but like it was several days leading up to it several days after and it kind of extended that day so we celebrated a few days before and then also a few days after it's also less maintenance so if you are a very high maintenance bride and you have to see and touch everything that is going into your wedding the florals you got to taste the food you've got to see literally everything piece by piece then a destination wedding probably isn't for you so i really liked the idea because it was super low maintenance i knew i could kind of create this vision that i wanted i could send it to my wedding coordinator and she would do it we would just fly in worry about the expenses and that was it and i wouldn't see anything until the day of which i was so fine with you don't get to see everything and you kind of just put your trust into your coordinators another reason we had a destination wedding was because of the cost so I knew what I wanted in like a normal US wedding I knew kind of off the top of my head what I wanted and there are a lot of venues where you pay anywhere from 7,000 to 15,000 just to have the venue that's not food that's not even that's nothing that's literally just to book the venue and I was mind blown by that I couldn't believe that people pay that when I compared my US cost to everything that I wanted and kept it really basic it still it was like double the amount that we paid in Mexico and I got so much more out of my Mexico wedding than I would have in the US and we paid half the price next I want to talk on how we chose our resort I just have notes in front of me because this one is very interesting okay so I looked everywhere I looked at Jamaica Dominican Republic Puerto Rico I looked at Mexico, Caribbean, and Cabo. I was set on getting married in Cabo, but when I was comparing flight prices and things like that, it just made sense to stay with the Caribbean because most of our guests were from the East Coast, so flights just made sense. But if you are from the West Coast, it might make sense to do Cabo, you know, just weigh out your options and make that decision for yourself. I had never been to Mexico until two months before I went with my company. I didn't get to see the resort that we were getting married at. I just trusted them and trusted it was going to be great we did decide to go with dreams playa mujeres golf and spa resort it is just north of cancun we originally booked a resort in riviera maya which is like a 60 minute drive from the airport and an hour i don't know why i said 60 minutes like an hour drive from the airport we had that booked for i 
want to say a little while like that we were set on that and we started looking at prices this wasn't an all-inclusive resort and we ended up going with dreams which is an all-inclusive which played a huge part in it because it was cheaper for our guests to come when looking at flights as well as their stay with food and drinks and all of that so we decided to switch over to dreams dreams was also closer to the airport it was very convenient to get married just north of cancun because the airport we flew into obviously was Cancun. When researching different places in Mexico, I really wanted to make sure that safety was one of the top things that we looked at and researched. So Playa Mujeres stood out to me because it is a gated community and all of the reviews said it was extremely safe. No one had any issues and it really was so beautiful it's also right next door to secrets so if you're not familiar with all-inclusive resorts dreams and secrets are essentially owned by the same people and so if you're staying at one you have access to the other so dreams was like the family friendly resort and then secrets was adult only so we liked it because we could eat at both dreams and secrets so it opens up your options you now have double the amount of places to eat you have different bars different pools different beach fronts and so that was really really nice this dreams resort also had really good reviews online so i really just trusted other people and their opinion we picked january because it matched up with our schedule of course taylor my husband is a professional baseball player in the minor league system so we wanted to plan around that obviously and then we had people in our bridal party who were in college so we wanted to plan around winter break and also my brother and some other guests were in high schools so we planned around their winter break as well. We were also told that January was a great time because you're avoiding hurricane season, which you have to look into. If you're getting married somewhere tropical, look into their rainy season and hurricane season because it's a real thing. But January was absolutely beautiful. It wasn't too hot. There weren't too many mosquitoes and... It was just a really, really nice time to get married in Mexico. I definitely wanted a beach vibe. I didn't necessarily want to be on the beach, but I wanted to see the beach. Once we started planning and I saw that there was a bar on the beach and I knew my guest could grab a drink and sit down and just like the little things when looking into it, I realized the beach location was definitely what I wanted. So we did have a beach wedding. As far as the reception, I wanted more of like garden, lawn vibes, more classic and so we moved it to the central garden which was in the middle of the resort a huge grass lawn and we had string lights which was my dream all I wanted out of my wedding was string lights and I got it so honestly everything else could have gone wrong and I would have been happy that I got my string lights I also wanted to really embrace the culture of the country so in our ceremony I added maracas to each seat and that was our exit so when we were announced husband and wife they shook the maracas and were woo, cheering whatever so we did have the maracas for the ceremony and then for the reception I wanted a mariachi band so bad but we were well over our budget and my mom surprised me I'm sitting at the reception eating and I did not expect it the mariachi band came out and did like their little thing and that was something that i really wanted because we were in mexico and i wanted to embrace their culture and i wanted our guests to feel that mexico vibe so i felt like if i didn't embrace the culture what was my point of having a destination wedding but of course you don't have to that's something you can decide when planning your wedding if you want to embrace that country's culture or not we are finally to the top 10 tips i would give a bride who is planning a destination wedding the first one is work with a travel coordinator I did mention very briefly that we worked with a travel coordinator and I cannot suggest this enough because it makes it so much easier on you as a bride and your husband planning this and booking your travels and things like that they also are going to work with your guests we use the company journeys her name is Kim Goldstein she is amazing she made our lives so much easier Easier. the whole process was so easy because of her there was no extra cost to use a travel coordinator so with journeys I don't know about other companies but Kim our travel coordinator she works directly with the resort so that's how she gets paid I feel like a travel coordinator is definitely my number one tip because she took that weight off of us when it came to booking and things like that she went ahead and booked our stay our flights she booked our guest day our guest flights it is way less stressful on you 
if you have someone else deal with that stuff. And also, I love that you can make payments towards your stay and your flight. So we didn't pay anything right up front. We made payments throughout the seven or eight months that we had in advance. My second tip, which is just as important, is use TripAdvisor. So that seems so silly, but when you have never been to a place, it is so hard to look at their website where there's these perfectly curated, beautiful pictures that are totally edited. So if you go on TripAdvisor and you go down to the reviews, you will see that people upload pictures with their reviews. Those pictures in the reviews are pictures that people pulled their phones out and they took on the beach or in the room and the resort or the pool, or maybe they took a picture of the food. So you're getting to see pictures that are unedited and pictures that truly show what you would see if you walked into the resort. And so that was really helpful. My third tip is do an all-inclusive resort. So the first resort we booked was not all-inclusive and I truly believe it would have been a very stressful time going there and wanting to buy drinks and food and then you're hesitant to go all out because you're sitting there worrying about the money that you, you know, you're spending. When you do an all-inclusive resort, that mindset of spending and worrying about money, it goes away because you've paid for it all in advance. If you do an all-inclusive, it is going to be more appealing to your guests, I promise, because when they get on that flight to go to Mexico or Jamaica, wherever you're having your wedding, they know that once they are on that flight, everything is paid for unless they buy a souvenir or something. That stress, that money, brings everyone is now gone and they can enjoy the trip and enjoy their stay and get as many drinks as they want and eat as much food as they want without worrying about the cost. I also loved that at the Dreams Resort, we didn't have to wear wristbands. So a lot of times if you stay at an all-inclusive, you have to wear a wristband. And two months prior to our wedding, I went to a Marriott Resort in Cancun and you had to have a wristband on the whole time. And when you're laying out in the sun and of course it's a wedding and things like that, you don't wanna have to wear a wristband so I would just research a little bit on the all-inclusive part of your resort and just kind of get a feel for it. Because we did an all-inclusive resort, our rehearsal dinner was essentially free. Instead of planning this dinner where we had to pay out of pocket, I decided that after our walkthrough rehearsal, we would hang out at the lobby bar. All of the drinks were free because we were all all-inclusive. So we all were drinking and hanging out. There was music. We got to talk with everyone and it just got all of the guests together right before the wedding. And then after we kind of dispersed, we all went out to eat wherever we wanted to go out to eat. And there wasn't like a set dinner for everyone, which which I think was super important because everyone's paying already for the all-inclusiveness. So if they're staying three nights and they pay for three nights, you want them to be able to go and enjoy themselves as well and get the food that they paid for. My fourth tip is send your invites well in advance. I would recommend sending your invites out a year prior to your wedding. Our invites got to our guests about nine months prior to the wedding and it definitely worked out. People made it, it all turned out good. But with a destination wedding, you do have to take off work and people have to plan around certain things. So the sooner you get your invites out, the better. So if you are doing a destination wedding, I would get them out a year in advance so people have plenty of time to plan for your wedding and take off of work. You know, if they have kids, they've got to figure out where the kids are going if you're not having kids at your wedding. So you just got to figure out so much stuff. So definitely send them out a year in advance. My fifth tip is make a Pinterest board of everything you want your wedding to look like. For me, I was big on lush like greenery and white flowers, but nothing too overboard. And I love the string lights and I wanted maracas. Our wedding coordinator at Dreams was Paola Prado and she was so good. I she has a special place in my heart because she was so sweet and she really did make the day less stressful. Once I booked my wedding at Dreams, I was sent a wedding planning sheet that had everything broken down. You know, our food options, music, everything was on there, lighting, decor, and you could go through these catalogs and see what they had available. There was a budget planner, so the second I wanted something, I would put it into the budget planner and it would give me the price for that. And then it would total up your entire budget at the end. I didn't 
start actual communication with Paula, our coordinator, until about two months out. So in October, I believe, I sent her the sheet. I still had some things to fill out, but she helped me with them, and that's when we really started communicating and making payments on our wedding. I actually sent my entire Pinterest board to my wedding coordinator, and I would pinpoint one picture and be like, okay, I like this tablecloth with this ivy branch wrapped around it. How much would this be? And she would quote me on it, and so I could decide if I needed something that was more affordable or if that was okay. Tip number six is research your resort and their wedding comps. So what I mean by comps is you can get free nights if you have enough people who stay at the resort. You can get a free reception, rehearsal dinner. You can get so many things. So the first resort we booked, they had a lot of really good comps. It would have been more expensive for our guests, but we would have gotten a bigger discount. But the resort we decided to go with was more affordable for our guests and we didn't get as many great comps. We still got some money back, but there weren't like a ton of really good comps and we had a really big wedding party. Tip number seven. This one is a good one. Be aware of how many people you are inviting to your destination wedding. We were told when planning our wedding to invite as many people as we would if we had a wedding in the States, which is a lot of people. We were told that only about five to 10% of the people that we invited would actually accept. And then you would also have some people last minute that wouldn't show up. So to go ahead and invite as many people as we could. We originally budgeted and booked rooms for max 60 people. We thought that was a great number. I'm like, there's no way more than 60 people are going to fly to Mexico for our wedding and it's just not gonna happen. So we booked out rooms for 60 people and we ended up having 84 guests okay so we were well over our budget at this point we were expecting 60 to be the max and really thinking like 45 people was a good number so just keep that in mind when you are inviting people that if you invite them you are inviting them and they now have that option to come so don't count anyone out we had such a great group go to Mexico I loved everyone that was there but we truly were only expecting 60 people and when i saw that 84 people had booked i was like oh my gosh we are way over our budget tip number eight is definitely one that i feel like people have a hard time grasping but be prepared for people to decline the invite because of cost and location. It's just going to happen. We had several people that we really, really wanted there, whether it was family or friends, that declined because of cost, the location, they didn't like flying, they didn't have a passport. So just keep that in mind that if someone declines that you are really close with, it is just going to happen and that is the risk you take by planning a destination wedding. So don't take it to heart, it's just, it's the way it is. Tip number nine is really fun and I'm excited to finally say this because we haven't told anyone this. Only our closest friends, some people at the wedding, and obviously family know this, but you need to go to the courthouse and get married before your actual wedding. Yes, we went to a courthouse and I will add the video here of us getting married. This was in November of 2019. We got legally married November 22nd of 2019 and then our wedding in Mexico was January 3rd of 2020. The reason you should go get married at a courthouse before is because of the Mexico marriage laws. If you are a US citizen getting married in Mexico, you have to have a judge present, you have to have a translation of the marriage license, and you have to have blood work done. There's so much that goes into it and it ends up being thousands and thousands of dollars and we really didn't acknowledge our November marriage date at the courthouse we really were just like oh this is cool like we're legally married now but we told each other before going into the courthouse that our celebration and actual feeling of being married wasn't going to take place until January 3rd so going into the courthouse with that mindset we knew we had to legally get it done but the feeling on the wedding day that like newly married and husband and wife that whole like emotion was still there and it didn't affect that day whatsoever. It still felt so real and 
that love and emotion was present. When we went to the courthouse, we didn't tell anyone. We were in Georgia in Taylor's hometown and we told our close family, like immediate family, but we really wanted to do it kind of quietly. We didn't want to tell our guests. We didn't want people to really know that that's what we were doing. It was just me and Taylor and then Taylor's grandfather came because he couldn't make it to the wedding and he had mentioned to Taylor previously that he really would want to be at the courthouse if we got married. We didn't have anyone else there because we were in Georgia. I didn't want my family to feel left out and I just knew so many people would want to be there. So that's what we did and it was really nice having that experience between just us two and then having his grandfather there who wouldn't be able to make it to the wedding because I know how special that was to him. I actually was trying to kind of hint on my Instagram, which I knew no one would catch on, but I put up this post on my Instagram on November 22nd when we went to the courthouse and got married and the caption was my wolf pack and I just wanted to put it up so I could look back on that day and remember you know what we were wearing the happiness and the feeling because even though that wasn't our actual wedding day like the wedding ceremony it was our legal marriage and so I just wanted to have that memory you don't have to go two months in advance or a month and a half, whatever we did. You can go a week, you can go a few days before you leave for your wedding, but we were fighting the holiday season. So right after we went to the courthouse, it was Thanksgiving. And then I went home to Virginia to finish wedding planning and do last minute things. So I knew that was really the only time we had because the next time I saw Taylor, it would be New Year's Eve and we were leaving that next day. So I really didn't have much time. If you are still watching, you have made it to tip number 10. And this one I feel like is really important. My dog is right here. He is just wanting attention. So he might hang out for a little bit, but we are on tip number 10. And this one is so important, you guys. If you are having a destination wedding, then you need to make sure that you have itineraries for your guests and also have something for them to take home. Guests are on vacation. Yes, they are there for your wedding and they care about your wedding and that is important to them, but they also are going to have some free time and they want to know, bye. They want to know how to plan their days. Maybe you're doing a rehearsal dinner or you're having a morning after brunch or something like that. You need to have an itinerary that maps out every single day so they know how to plan their free time and they can plan time on the beach or by the pool, dinner, you know, things like that. Maybe they want to go golfing or work out. Just keep them in mind. They are on vacation and they want to know what the schedule is going to look like when it comes to wedding activities. Give them something to take home, whether it's a koozie. We did koozies for their cans because a lot of people there were drinking beer and a lot of people loved our koozies. They were a big hit and they were really fun. We picked out a cute saying for them. And then we also had the maracas. So we paid for the maracas and we had them at the ceremony. They also brought them to the reception and people could take them home. So that kind of gave them like a little Mexico culture thing to take home. Now it is time for the Q&A part of this video and I have so many good questions on here. I'm really excited to answer some of these and I think they're great questions. Some of them are duplicates so I'm going to pick the ones that I think are really good and people would like to hear. So with that being said, I'm gonna start with the first one I see and that is, was it difficult to not be able to visit the venue beforehand or did you? So like I just touched on, we did not see the venue before we showed up and it was our wedding weekend. It definitely was interesting pulling up to the resort because we didn't know what to expect. To answer this question as short as possible, it was a little terrifying, but if you read your TripAdvisor reviews and look at the pictures, you're going to be well prepared for whatever resort you are pulling up to. The next question is, were any guests upset about room or flight prices? So yeah, we definitely had people who could not afford it. And I offered, you know, is there anything we could do to help? And we definitely wanted to make sure everyone knew that we wanted them to be there. But I wouldn't say that anyone reached out to me specifically and complained about the flights or the prices. But at the same time, it was a vacation for them. So I don't think anyone regrets it or felt pressured to spend that money. How to pick hair and makeup and an officiant. 
So for hair and makeup, I did a ton of Instagram research. I have this strategy that I feel like would work with any resort, no matter where you are getting married. So what I did is I went to the location on Instagram. So I went to the resort on Instagram and like the location, you can search Dreams Playa Mujeres Golf and Spa Resort, and then you can go to that location and see every post. So I was seeing so many bridal posts and I would check out every single bride's hair and makeup that they tagged, and I just kind of based my opinion off of that. I'm gonna go ahead and add the Instagram handle for who I use for hair and makeup for the wedding day, and I think they had three or four, I think four people that were doing hair and makeup for me, um, my mom, grandma, my mother-in-law, and the bridesmaids. So I'll add that below, but that was pretty easy. I just did research. And then for our officiant, I actually had a family friend. He's pretty much like family to me. I had him officiate our wedding and he does a ton of weddings in Virginia and all over. So I thought it would be a really good decision. Would you recommend your wedding photographer? 100% I would recommend our wedding photographer. I love the picture so much. They were easy going and just, we were throwing so much at them. Oh, I will add the Instagram handle here for Jack. It's Jack Bates Photography. And then he also had another guy shoot with him. I'll add his handle too. He is Ben, as you guys can see. But they were so awesome. And we were doing random stuff. Like we jumped in the pool. We had last minute things and they were so open to it and really chill my kind of people. So I love them. I totally would recommend them. And they also did our wedding video, which they had some audio issues with because our wedding day was the windiest day ever in Mexico. I swear it was. So we are working on a couple of like little audio things and then I will drop it on my channel for you guys to watch, but I'm really excited about that. Was your honeymoon the same location as the wedding? So we got married at Dreams, which was the family friendly resort, which we loved so much more actually than the adult only. Then the day after our wedding, we moved over next door to Secrets and we still had access to Dreams because they're like the neighboring resort, sister resorts. And we wanted to do like more adult only secluded and we really liked it, but we did like our room at dreams better we had a huge swim out it was epic and the secrets room was definitely more romantic and i liked it because it had a huge bathtub and i ordered pizza every night the next one is did you bring anything from home decor etc or was everything at the destination everything was at the destination except for the itineraries and koozies so if you're bringing like gift bags or things like that for your guests that's something you would bring or you have the option to ship to Mexico ship literally anything you want if you have I don't know random decor that you want at your wedding and it's in the states you can ship it to them and they'll hold it for you so that's always an option what would you do better next time what would you leave out literally nothing I mean if there's one thing I would just say eat I literally didn't eat the wedding food at the reception. I like don't remember the food at all. And everyone talked about how good it was. So the only thing that I would do better next time is actually eat a whole plate of food. How many people did you invite versus how many actually came? I'm pretty sure we invited well over 250 people. And I know people are gonna think that's insane, but I gave everyone a plus one because a destination wedding, no one's gonna wanna fly alone. And I'm not the type of person to be like, oh, I don't know her, she can't come. I want everyone to just have fun and bring whoever. So I gave every single person a plus one and I'm pretty sure we invited like 250 people and we had 84 come. So, lots of people. Was it fun jumping in the pool at the very end of your wedding? Yes, I recommend it. I have so many people that ask me if my dress is okay, you know, do I regret it? Was my makeup ruined? Guys, it was the best thing in the world. We got epic pictures and it wasn't planned. It's not like I went into the day saying, okay, at the end of the night, we're jumping in the pool and we're going crazy. I just, in the moment at the reception, everyone's hyped up and we're drinking and it's fun. And we were all like, okay, we're jumping in the pool. I had one of my bridesmaids, Megan, my sister, my maid of honor, Rachel, they were all hyped up about it. So we got everyone involved and it was a lot of fun. That's all that I have for you guys today. So I hope that was helpful if you are planning a destination wedding. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to give it a big thumbs up, leave a comment, and don't forget to subscribe to my channel so you don't miss any of my videos in the future. And 
that's all that I have for you guys. So I will see you in the next video.